There are a few financial milestones that are as satisfying as hitting that first $100,000. It is a goal that is both challenging and achievable. Your first $1,000 you could save with a minimum wage job and you could probably have $1,000 by the time you graduate high school. Easiest money you'll ever make. Your first $10,000 you can easily save with your first entry level job right out of university over a period of several months or a year. But $100,000, now that is something that can take from a few years to up to a decade or more for many. I don't know if you've ever seen $100,000 except maybe in the movies. But I assure you, something gets lost in the translation. So in this video, I'm going to start with the how, as in how to get your first $100,000. And then I'm really going to talk about the why. Why? And why you should really consider getting to that $100,000 milestone as fast as you can. Now, before I proceed, I want to recognize that everyone's going to have their own starting points and their own advantages. And so the journey to that $100,000 is going to look different for different individuals. Now, I'm going to talk about getting to your $100,000 target within the context of starting out your career and being a generally young individual. But if you're not young or if you're like in your 30s or 40s, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is still going to be applicable. Okay. First off, compounding is not going to help you. Why do you ask? Why not, you stupid bastard? Yeah, so every video tells you that you should invest your money as soon as you can and you can compound your money and that growth is going to get you to that $100,000. Now, if your goal is to save $100,000 within a five to seven year time frame, compounding is not going to help you. What do I mean by that? Now, I'm not saying that take all your cash and keep it in your mattress. Absolutely not. Go ahead, invest it, do it early, do it often. However, you have to recognize that a big portion of the final amount of that $100,000 is going to come from the money that you actually put in. So compounding over short periods of time is not going to be significant enough. You can see that saving $10,000 a year for eight years will get you to $100,000 inflation adjusted based on a 7% growth rate. However, about 80% of that money will come from your deposits and a little over 20% is from growth. Now this $22,000 in growth is not too shabby and you should certainly invest your money and try to get that growth. But just know that a large portion of the final value is going to come from the money that you actually put in. So what does this mean? This means that the only two ways of getting to your $100,000 goal within a reasonable period of time, let's say four, five, six, seven years, is going to be through saving and saving a lot of money. So how do you go about saving a lot? Well, there are two ways. Number one, reducing your expenses. And this is where you as a young individual have a significant advantage. You probably have very few liabilities. You don't have a lot of obligations. You don't have a mortgage. You don't have kids. And it's going to be incredibly easy for you to save, generally speaking. Furthermore, you can probably live with roommates at this stage of your life, or you could even live with your parents and you can drastically cut down your housing expenses, which is really one of the biggest expenses that you'll have. Cooking your meals can also save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a year. Another way to increase your savings is if you are lucky enough to make a decent income right out of university, you can go ahead and start contributing to your RRSP or your 401k for the Americans and that will reduce your taxable income and minimize the amount of taxes you have to pay. You can give a further boost to your savings by participating in any employer match programs you may have. So sometimes you'll have an employer who will say you can contribute 3% to your RSP and they will match the other 3%. So on a $50,000 income, you could easily be getting $1,500 extra for free. So the biggest pitfall at this stage of your life is that you can look at that sweet, sweet paycheck and just go nuts and lease a very expensive vehicle or rent an overpriced apartment. Now, the second way to increase your savings is simply to earn more. Easier said than done. My goodness, what an idea. Why didn't I think of that? 
Now, this is tricky because as a new graduate, you're probably putting your time in and you're learning and building your experience. So it's not going to be easy to just hop to a new job and you probably need a little bit of experience before you can look for other opportunities or even ask for a raise. However, I still encourage people to look around for other opportunities all the time. You never know what you might end up with. You never know what you might get and it allows you to really understand what your value in the market is. Also remember, if you do end up getting a raise or if you do get a new job with a higher pay, make sure you save 100% of that raise. The other way of increasing your income is through side gigs. Now, I say this with an asterisk, okay? Because as a new graduate hire or someone early on in their career, you're probably gonna get a way better ROI by working harder and putting in more hours in your day job. Getting a raise can easily get you $10,000 more and you might end up having to work weekends and evenings at a side gig anyway to make an extra $10,000. As someone early on in their career, you definitely have way more potential. So I would encourage you to exploit that potential before looking for other side gigs. There's nothing wrong with developing on the side something that you really like and something that interests you but just keep that in perspective and choose wisely. So we've gone over increasing your savings and increasing your income. These are very general tips, I know, but one tip that's rarely ever mentioned is keeping a net worth chart. Tracking your net worth might be one of the single most helpful things and encouraging things you can do for yourself. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Something simple on Excel where you put in your total assets and you put in your total liabilities every month and you have your final net worth value and just watching that line go up steadily month by month year over year can be massively encouraging and can really give you the motivation you need to keep going there are no shortcuts if you want to save a hundred thousand dollars in a short period of time you are going to have to save more and earn more it's going to require a lot of sacrifices but believe me when i say these sacrifices will be worth it and they're going to be much easier to make when you're younger than when you are older. Okay, so maybe you're with me so far, but you're asking, what's the point of all of this? I save $100,000 and it's probably gonna be numbers on a screen somewhere, or it's going to be equity in real estate. What's the point of it? I'm not going to feel rich, right? Wrong. Here are the ways $100,000 can and will change your life. Let me put $100,000 into perspective. If you manage to save $100,000 by the age of 30, which you invest in the S&P, and then you proceed to never save a single cent for the rest of your career, then by the age of 65, you will have a million dollars. You save $100,000 by the age of 30, you forget about it, and then you start blowing through all of your income. As long as you don't take any debts and you just spend all that you make, then by the age of 65, you will have a million dollars inflation adjusted waiting for you. Another way to look at what $100,000 can do is if you invest $100,000 in the S&P, then every year you can withdraw $4,000. That is enough to pay for an international vacation to almost anywhere in the world. So saving $100,000 will pay for your annual vacation for the rest of your life. That's a pretty sweet deal. $100,000 is also enough to probably pay four to seven years off your rent or more depending on where you live. Imagine that for a second. Imagine not having to worry about putting a roof over your head for years. And if you lose your job and something unfortunate were to happen where you can't work, you could probably make $100,000 last for a couple of years or more depending on where you're living. That is going to be a significant security net for you and give you an abundance of peace of mind. If you had $100,000 and your car broke down, you could probably buy a mid-range likely used vehicle five to seven times over in cash. Heck, you could even quit your job and go traveling and in certain parts of the world, you could keep going for four to five years on $100,000. So to recap, $100,000 can secure your retirement, buy you some luxuries, and help you not slip down the socioeconomic ladder if you meet some unfortunate circumstances. For me, getting to $100,000 made me even more frugal. It was like a proof of concept and I understood that it could be done and your net worth could keep growing and if you keep investing at a certain rate, you can kind of project where you're going to be five, 
10, 15 years from now, and it motivated me to keep going. Your first 100K will change you. You will become more conscious of your spending and you'll build great money habits. And once you see your $100,000, you might be more hesitant to blow it all on something frivolous, knowing the amount of sacrifices and hard work it took to get there. You will learn the value of security and peace of mind, and you will learn to value the possibilities that money can provide over anything material money can buy. All right, there you have it, folks. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, here's another video that you might enjoy as well. Cheers.